In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to animate a parent-child relationship. You might want to do this if you want a character to be able to pick up or move an object. And to do this, you need to make the object a child of the character's hand. But we don't always want the object to be a child. We only want it to become a child when the character actually picks it up. So we need to be able to switch this on and off. So to start, let's remind ourselves of how to make the parent-child relationship work in Blender. So if we add a new monkey head to the stage by pressing Shift A and choosing monkey, we're going to make the monkey a child of the cube. So if you remember, if you want to make something a child of something, you select it first and then whatever you select last will be its parent. So if we select the monkey first and then by right clicking on it and then hold down shift and right click and click on the cube and then press Control and P and make the monkey a child of the cube. Move the cube and you'll see that the monkey follows but move the monkey and you'll see that it still can be moved independently uh, the cube doesn't follow the monkey only the other way around. So we're going to actually make a claw and make it so that it's able to pick up a simple object, uh, in this case a ball. So delete the cube and the monkey from the stage and add an armature bone, Shift A, armature. Go into edit mode by pressing tab, then press W to subdivide the bone until you've got three sections. Select the top of the last bone and press E to extrude a new bone out of the top. If your bones are created at a weird angle, you can correct this by pressing Ctrl N and then choosing the correct axis to line up the bone perfectly, whether X, Y, or Z. This obviously depends which view you're in. So select the end of the bone again and press E to extrude down this time. Do the same until you've got three talons coming out of your claw. Finally, select the ends of these talons and press E again. So you're selecting all three by pressing Shift and right click. Press E again to extrude out until you have three claws. Click on the Object tab, which is the little man icon, and then select the B Bone option. So go into Edit Mode now and select All by pressing A. And then you can press S to scale to make the bones thicker or thinner as you like. Now we're going to animate the claw so that it picks up an object. Add a UV sphere to the stage by pressing Shift A. Scale down small enough so that the claw will be able to pick up the ball easily. So that it will fit inside the claw. Select the bones and now go into pose mode. We're going to animate the pose of the bones. On the first frame, press I, make sure you have all of your bones selected, and then choose Lock Rot Scale to add a keyframe on frame 1 for all of the bones. This is a good idea because uh, then any, if you move on to another frame, whatever bone you choose to animate has already got a starting point. So create a simple animation of the claw rotating and moving as if it's going to grab the ball. Do this by adding keyframes in frame 10, 20, 30, and 40 until you get a simple moving claw animation. No need to get too complicated in this example, it's just to show you how to actually do this. So your last frame should end up resting on top of the ball. Skip a few frames, select all the bones again and add a lock rot scale keyframe for all of them. So we're basically letting the hand or the claw rest uh, for a little while until it actually picks up the ball. So move on another 10 frames and animate the claw back up the way it came until it is back where it started. Make the claw shake around a bit to show that the ball is actually attached and that it's got a grip on it. Um, animate again to put the ball back down again. We don't actually have the ball picked up yet, so we're just imagining that the ball is in the claw's hand at this stage. Animate the claw so that it opens and closes around the ball when it's picking up. Um, just keep it simple. So all we have to do now is to actually make the sphere go with the claw when it picks it up. 
so we can see if we play through the animation. The claw is doing exactly what we want it to do, except that it's not picking up the ball. Of course, we could animate the ball itself to try and match the movement of the claw, but it's quite time consuming and uh, there's an easier way. So we can just make it a child of the claw and then it will automatically follow where the claw goes. Select the sphere and then choose the object constraint tab, which is the chain icon. Click add constraint and then choose the child of constraint. Click on the bone that you want to link it to and rename it as hand in the bones tab. Select the ball again and choose armature and hand from the target bone options. So this will link the ball. We need to click set inverse or clear inverse or the other way around until the ball goes back to where we want it to be. It's always some combination of these. It depends on the position of the ball. So maybe you need to press clear inverse first and then set inverse or possibly the other way around. Notice the influence slider, which is set to 1 at the moment, or 100%. So we can actually animate this slider. So if we hover the cursor over the slider, and then press the I key, this will add a keyframe. So if we do that in frame uh, 0, or frame 1, and then turn the slider all the way down to 0, in other words, there's no influence. It's not constrained to the bone that we selected. Then if we move the playhead to where the claw actually picks up the ball, around frame 40, and hover the mouse again over the influence slider and press I to add another keyframe. So if the slider is green, it means that there's a keyframe somewhere on the timeline related to the slider, but not on that particular frame. If the slider is yellow, then it means that there is a keyframe uh, on that particular frame for the slider. So put the influence up to all the way to 1. And then from that point on, the ball will be picked up from that frame onwards. So at the end, we're going to do the opposite and put the influence back down to 0 again when, when the claw puts the ball down. You may need to press clear inverse and set inverse to reposition the ball. Or if you've actually dropped it at this stage, you may need to manually put it back into position. If the ball is in the wrong position when you drop it, as I just said, you may need to go back one frame, insert a keyframe there, and then go to the messed up position frame and reposition the ball again manually. So that's the basics of interacting with objects. If you wanted to pick up an object or uh, grab something and move it to somewhere else, this is the easy way to do it using Blender.